Hello and welcome to the Direct Marketing and Branding presentation, part of the Online Livestock Marketing webinar series. My name is Shannon Sand and I will be your presenter today. So our objectives for today will be to, one, look at goals. What are they? How can I use them? How do I use them in business and what does that mean for me? Who are my customers? Direct marketing, branding. So I'm a big fan of goal setting. It's important. It helps us identify lots of things about ourselves and what we want for our business. An example goal might be something like, I will exercise more. But a SMART goal, which is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based, might be something like, I will walk for at least one mile three times a week, and I will use an activity tracker to record my steps. So that's an example of a personal SMART. There are all different types of, types of goals out there, though. So there are personal goals, like discussed previously, but there are also business goals, community goals, and much more. We're going to mostly focus on business goals today. So some questions you might want to ask yourself to discover these are, what are the goals of this business? Is it something like brand, brand awareness? Who are we? What are we doing? Are you wanting to increase profits of your operation or are you just looking to maintain? Uh, are you wanting to educate and be informative? For example, this photo courtesy of Sugar Hill Farmstead is an educational picture. It shows you the different cuts of meat, where they're from, things like that. So, target audience. So who is our target audience? That is a good question because it's not going to be the same for everybody here. It is different. So what's their age? Are you looking for someone who is 35 to 44 with kids? Are you looking for someone who is 50 plus and retired? Uh, are you looking for someone with a certain income level? I mean, I've met people that can target like their audience so well they know the kind of car they drive and what kind of bag or purse or like wallet they own. So. If you can really narrow down your target audience, it really does help you in marketing and branding your products. So where do they shop? Are they online shoppers? Are they in-store shoppers? Do they shop at farmer's markets? Do they do some sort of combination of all three? And what's their breakdown? What's their percentage? So what are some other demographics that you might want to hone in on that you can think about? So is it, like I said, income? What do they like to eat? Are they vegetarians? Are they vegan, vegans? Are they omnivores? Are they pescatarians? There's all different kinds of eating patterns. I'm focusing mostly on that because this is obviously geared towards people in agriculture and livestock, but this is true for anyone's business. So really think about and hone in on those demographics that are key to your audience. So what kind of direct marketing? There's lots of options when it comes to direct marketing, but we've only spoken about a few. It's pretty endless, realistically. Uh, farmer's market is always... There's community-supported agriculture, which is a very popular one, sometimes it's called CSA boxes or ag boxes, I've heard. It does go by different names depending on where you are. The internet, the internet is an option that we've spoken about several times throughout this series, and it is a good option for some. For some, it's it's not an ideal option. It just depends, again, on your setup and your operation and your audience. Roadside stands are a really popular option depending on where you are. Uh, a lot of people like to do the you pick and things of that nature. Um, so there's lots and lots of options, and I am a big fan of a hybridized option. So it could be a combination of a CSA with add-ons, or it could be an online option that also aggregates with other farms to create an online offering that allows a live pickup. Uh, there could be any number of options and way to have a hybrid operation, which is also good because it hopefully can help create multiple revenue streams, which would be ideal. Branding. So why should one brand a commodity? Is a way, it is a way to escape from merely competing on volume and price alone. Brands help to differentiate products as they enhance their value. Beyond their functional attributes. 
They build preferences versus competing products and therefore create long-term sustainable competitive advantage, which is what we love to do in our industry. So what is branding? A brand is the combination of a name, words, symbols, or some sort of design that identifies the product and a company and differentiates it from competition. Take just a second and think about all the brands, whether that's like a symbol or a word and like it evokes something. Sometimes it evokes memories, sometimes it evokes emotional feelings, sometimes all of those things. Um, think about like some brands that, that you have in mind that just immediately come to mind when you think of like a specific golden arch or like um, specific flowers for certain states, things like that. Branding can really serve as a way for consumers to quickly and easily identify one product from another and to associate them with quality attributes related to the brand. So consumer experience is a big part of branding. Uh, you want consumers to have a positive experience with products so that they associate the name or brand with a high quality satisfying product. An association with poor and consistent quality can obviously lead to the need for discounted prices um, we would like to avoid that in general. So challenges in branding, and there's a lot. These are just some, a few of them. So long-term commitment thinking, you have to think in terms of years rather than months, and like not just one or two, but three, five, 10, 20. ID identification of the segments, pricing competitively, positioning of the brand, promotion of commodity as a category, what makes the product special? The value conscious consumer is always on the lookout for the lowest price. So keep in mind that may not be the consumer that you want to target. A brand needs to be able to scale up to meet consumer demands. So this may mean, are you ready for a large influx of customers if that happens? And if you sell out, how soon can you restock your product? Depending on the livestock you're producing, it could be six to eight weeks, or it could be 18 to 24 months so it, it could take a while so really think about that and that's one reason that like potentially aggregation may be a good option for some people so what is the market structure in place for branding there really isn't one in agriculture though that has been changing over the last few years the current method in ag is an aggregation method for products though not necessarily the case in hawaii so some benefits of branding are is that the majority of small agribusiness owners make their own make their branding debut by repackaging an existing product under the name of their farm ranch organization or business to promote brand recognition and to encourage the spread of experience attributes through word of mouth. Marketing branded agribusiness products is important for several reasons. Branded items are generally able to earn a higher price for the producer and can lead to brand loyalty, which leads to a strong customer base and the ability of the producer to better serve the needs of the market. Branding a product adds value by differentiating the product, making it stand out from the other items on the market, and by conveying additional information about the attributes of the product beyond appearance. Branding also adds value of two products simply because consumers generally believe that known branded products have better quality or more attributes than unbranded products. Another merit of branding is the sense of pride or community that can be experienced by the producer from successfully creating a brand identity. This is pretty true in agriculture. Think of some brands that you know that are ag related that you really enjoy and really like, there is a sense of pride and joy knowing that like you can get this brand or that this is a really high quality brand. That is something that is really interesting in terms of ag branding that has come about in the last few. The brand story, it's really, really important in agriculture. We wanna tell the story Honestly, and it's more important than ever now to tell our story with all of the different regulatory entities and other groups out there. It's important for us to communicate our story of why we are important to the community, the state, and the world. So, 
Some other things to keep in mind. Can you meet demand for your customers? How much time and money are you willing to invest? Do you have the time and resources available? Is it profitable? So if you're not at least breaking even, ideally it is something that you really need to keep that in mind. What are the legal liabilities? Do you need additional insurance? Do you need different kinds of liability insurance? Uh, do you need to become an LLC or incorporate? Do you need to look at some of those business structure options or op options or uh, opportunities? What kind of insurance do we need and how much? These are just a couple of other things that you might want to keep in mind when you are going through this process of marketing and branding uh, your product for consumers because you do have to keep in mind that your personal constraints and what those are. So thank you very much. My name is Shannon Sand. I am at the bottom of this slide. Savannah Katolsky and Melilana Oshiro helped put this on. And if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call. And thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.